What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. All right, so I wanna to talk to you about what nobody else is talking to you about in terms of choosing a camera. And especially at these high-end cameras, it's hard for me to distinguish between um, what is going to be the best camera for me. Um, so before I get it, dive into it, um, I hope you'll like and subscribe to the channel. I'm always trying to find uh, to the to get the answers. I'm always trying to get the answers for you, and uh, you know because they apply to me too. I'm trying to answer those same questions, and those are, for example, like what's the best camera for me. And uh, I spend so much time researching, which is quite frustrating because I don't think it should be spent on just researching cameras. Uh, but you have to because you have to wade through all the information um, and it's, it's very technical and uh, it's not comparing uh, the same things. Like on a computer, you can, you can compare like a computer processor, RAM, um, you know, and, and things like that. And then the difference will be generally that. Uh, the tech specs and the operating system that you want to use, whether it be like, for example, um, you know, Mac OS, Windows, or maybe you're into Linux. Um, but you get it, right? So, you know, there is one single thing that I think unifies all of it um, that you can kind of turn to as a, a general benchmark. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk generally about like how you know, things work and um, what else is out there. Um, so one one element is uh, the sensor. So all things being said, if you're comparing a full frame sensor to a full frame sensor, then generally, um, you know, the quality of the sensor, I'm gonna say is gonna be similar. Obviously, uh, they're not the same. Some are better than others. I generally feel like right now that the Canon sensor is better than the Sony sensor, but that's not all of it. But if we're just comparing sensor to sensor, that's how I feel. But then if you, um, and if you compare that even, you know, the size of the sensor to, let's say, uh, even an Ari, an Ari is, um, you know, a, is a smaller sensor, but still like it's, it seems like the sensor of choice. It's the camera of choice for uh, feature filmmakers. Um, compare that to a Black Magic. Compare that to a Panasonic uh, GH1 or any of those, any of those which are called Micro Four Thirds. The sensor size is different. Um, and then, of course, there's other components like um, you know the internal body and how it works with each other, and all, you know there's um, digit processors and all that stuff. And that stuff for me just kind of gets out, gets you know out there. So I'm thinking this completely though as um, from an engineer, and so the engineer is balancing. Um, all the different components and they're trying to achieve the same um, look or better than their competitors. Um, and they only have certain parts to work with. Um, for example, like if you're black, if they're black magic, you know, they have their own, they're working with a micro four third center. So they're trying to maximize the, the micro four third sensor. Compare that to, um, you know, Sony and Canon, which have their own proprietary sensors. Um, you know, they're trying to maximize their own and they have their own like secret sauce and which they're not going to talk about. Um, so, uh, so, you know, that's that. And then of course, you know, we could get into lenses, but ultimately, you know, the choice of lens is going to affect, um, what you get in the camera. Um, and ultimately, you know, the quality of that glass is going to affect it. So, you know, um, but that's, those are variables that you really can't control. Um, so again, ultimately what it comes down to, I think, is uh, the bit rate. And here's why. Um, because if you're capturing uh, information about a video or a picture, um, in a picture sense, it's very quick. It doesn't really matter. Um, but in a video sense, um, you have to maintain a certain amount of bit rate to acquire uh, you know, a similar quality video. All right, so um, let's go to um, and show you the different bit rates of what's published online. This is what I could find on the internet. Uh, again, I've used most of these cameras, uh, the Canon, the, the Sony, and the Blackmagic. Um, but this is what it is, so I'm gonna throw it up here. You can take a look at it first before we start talking about it.
if you look at the Canon R5, which is, you know, the, the top right now for a video, um, you know, at slow motion, the megabits per second is 1880, which is very high. And the AK RAW, to achieve the AK RAW, they're getting 2600 megabits per second, which in a different video, I've talked to, talked to you about the overheating. So even at the MP4 level, the approximate um, all I is 1300 megabits per second, which is very, very high. Um, and when you drop down to the 4K24, which is what you might be recording in, or the, you know, 30, depending on if it's TV, um, you know, it drops down to 470, which um, is, is very respectable at the all I. And then if you don't want all that information, then you can go to I, IPB, which goes down to 120. So um, that's the case there. So now let's take a look at what, um, the Sony publishes. Um, the Sony A7R4, for example, is only 100 megabits per second. So for me, I would not be um, purchasing the Sony R4 for video. I would definitely consider purchasing it for photography, but not for video because um, at 100 megabits per second, even you know at 4K, that, that pales in comparison to all the other cameras. Um, I was curious about that and that's answered my question there. So, you know, I've recorded in with the 6K Blackmagic and um, according to videomaker.com, you know, their top option for RAW Q0, which is pretty much like the uh, least amount of compression uh, in 6K is 483 megabits per second. And um, so, uh, you know, that, that tells you that um, that's similar in line with what the Canon's doing at the 4K. However, though, I mean, there's other things in play like the Blackmagic RAW compression is its own compression and it's being optimized. So, um, you know, they could be comparable. They could be similar. Obviously the color looks pretty good out of the 6K. So, um, and you know, there's more pixels that you have to consider for spread across all that data information. So maybe they're able to able to match that you leveraging the compression with the 6K. So that's something to think about. And then the Sony A7S III, what I found was in camera at least, um, I could only choose between about 280 and uh, 200 for the 4K modes. But according to what I found, the max bit rate is around 600, which, is, which would make sense because uh, the, the new um, compact flash media that they created is around whatever, 600, 800 megabits per second. So that would make sense that, you know, at its highest level that it could record to. Um, and I would say though, that um, if you want a better image out of the Sony for video, that's when the full size HDMI uh, port comes into play. And that's when an external recorder becomes uh, very, very important. So, you know, if you want to achieve a certain, uh, um, you know, image quality out of the camera, it's going to be less. And that's how it regulates its heat is because it reduces the amount of transfer bit rate. Um, but if you really want to maximize that image and, and that tells you though, that the Sony is capable of um, you know a better image when you add that external recorder. So I would say though you know let's say if you're recording, let's say you're trying, you're going to go oh, you want to do a feature film, and then I would I would recommend you use an external recorder so you can get the best possible image. However, though, I think that the 100 megabits per second is pretty acceptable. So you know unless um, unless you are doing like visual effects or you're doing, you know, um, you know, you're really specific about like how you want, uh, the look and you want to eke out all the possible, you know, possible, um, value out of your image, then yeah, again, use an external recorder out of the Sony, but, and, but the 280, the 280 and 200 is also going to be pretty good. It's just not, you know, I, I, I just think that, um, that's why when I, um, look at uh, stuff out of the Canon versus stuff out of the Sony, I immediately feel like um, the video quality is better. And it's, you know, a lot of times it is because look, I mean, it's going to almost at least one and a half to two times the amount of information that you're recording. So 
doesn't that logically make sense that you're going to get like that much better of an uh, of a um, uh, video? I wouldn't say it's 50% better though. I wouldn't say the Sony gives you 50% uh, is 50% is worse. You know, the difference might be 10%. So um, you have to think about that for your workflow too, because if you're managing all that data or if your editor, uh, you know, your editing suite is not able to handle all those files because Canon files have been known to, um, you know, cause a lot of extra post-production work then you have to consider that um, a lot of the Sony files do actually work pretty well. I think maybe also because it's, it's because the, the bit rate is lower too. So um, it's, it, it's, it's really, really interesting for me. It's, it's definitely something interesting for me. This is something that I've been thinking about. It's just something just through working with it, looking through the menus and then, and then looking at like what the actual results are. This is something that I've arrived at. So, um, uh, so overall um, that is my thoughts. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's all true. I am not the most, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm not a camera engineer. I am not, um, you know, and ultimately what ends up on camera and then, you know, on your screen is like, is really, you know, at, at your fingertips, you can make those, you know, you can, you can make the image look really, really good. Um, and then, you know, however, however it's delivered is, is what it is. So, um, but that is, those are my theories. And I think if you look at it that way, but then also look about the usability of each camera, do you need certain things? How are you gonna work in your workflow? Those are things to consider. But if it's just pure image quality, well then naturally, like if I'm choosing between the three brands, um, I think the Canon has a, I think the Canon has a higher bit rate. Uh, and so therefore that's why I feel like every time I look at between the three cameras, you know, who is achieving um, the best. However, though, finally, though, again, um, now that I'm looking back at like, I, you know, I posted a sample video of the Black Magic, why I wasn't able to achieve a better image, it's because I should have been using, um, you know, a better, better media card. Um, because, for example, on this Canon, I'm using an SD card and, you know, the, the transfer rate is around the same thing, like 100, and then I transfer it over to the Black Magic you know, and it's a hundred and then, you know, that it's not, um, the quality of that image is compared to the Canon on the HD. I think it's not as good, but, um, you know, the black magic where it can, where it can make, make up for it is, um, attaching like an external hard drive, like a NVMe drive to record more data because maybe what the Canon is doing is yes, it's recording at, um, you know, hundred megabits per second, um, to the card, but then there's a buffer, some unknown buffer. And that might be why there's a 30 minute limit because there's probably some sort of um, <laughs> limit on the buffer. So maybe they add more cache memory on Canon. This is stuff that the engineers don't tell you. This is really interesting. This is where I'm coming to. Really, really fun stuff. Um, so uh, if you like my thoughts, if you like my theories, leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Uh, you know, I could be shooting in the dark here. I could be totally wrong, but, uh, man, this is some interesting stuff and we're digging into it like it's area 51. All right. So, um, hope you like, and subscribe to the video and I'll talk to you next time.